This video is sponsored by Wizards of the Coast. You've been asking for it for a long time, and thanks to a sponsorship from our friends at Wizards of the Coast, we got the D&D Starter Kit! Yeah! So this starter kit is to basically show you that D&D is not intimidating. It's easy to hop in and play with your friends. Get on in here, Tim! Yeah! Woo! And your visit to Dragon's Rest begins. Yeah! I am Sylph Ilthrim. I'm a high elf. You may have heard of me. I'm Banktis Prompkin. Notorious criminal and rogue fighting for the sides of good. I am Monocle B. Arnes. I've come here for one thing and one thing only, and that is to determine my destiny. Hello, it's me, Barry the Baddies. I'm a soldier, I'm here to fight. I get my high power from my god. You hear a ruckus of splashing and wetness. Three figures are shambling up from the water's edge, about 30 feet away. They're dressed as sailors, but their skin is gray and they look drowned. I drive my dagger into the back of this thing. Okay, Barry winds up his big ass mace. Barry's got a big ass mace. Barry winds it up because he's in range and he's gonna try to attack both zombies with one big swing. Cause Barry can do that. I um, have a little blood and I look at it and I'm like, oh my God, disgusting. And I see Barry is still in grave danger. And I'm gonna use my great sword. You see that your friend is in danger and you rush across the sand, stowing your bow and pulling out your great sword, slashing at the zombie. Uh, and the zombie too stops moving. Hey! You've all defeated the zombies, and you are now free to go about your business and leave the pier. Yes! I say we make our way to Dragon's Rest with knowledge and experience on our side and one more tooth. Let's go! Huzzah. Very pretty. Your arrival quickly draws the attention of the entire population of the place, uh, which consi mostly consists of kobolds. Uh, if you want to see what a kobold looks like, yes. some of those kind of look like, like these little guys. Oh. 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 Would you say that they are uh, Damien size? Uh, for sure, absolutely. <laughs> These small reptilian folk eye you curiously while a couple of humans watch from the distance. All the cloister residents are dressed in simple clothes and no one carries any visible weapons. One of the kobolds pipes up with, what's your name? <gasps> And then with that, all the kobolds start barging you with questions. Where are you from? What's that? Why are you here? I, it looks like I'm in the front of the group, so I would like to answer. Um, if uh, you try to answer questions, they continually ask you more questions uh, as you're trying to answer them. And you them. being at the front, they can also see all of us very distinctively. <laughs> uh, uh, as all the kobolds kind of go like asking more and more questions. I look around for a leader or someone that's in charge or some leader of the kobolds. Uh, behind them, you can see a figure coming into view. <laughs> descending gracefully from the upper point of the, point of the clo cloister coming down the stairs. That's a really far way away. You said a cloister? Cloister. A, a cloister. cloister of it's what? It's a type of Pokemon. The remote cloister of Dragon's Rest. Okay. Yeah. She's an elderly woman with weathered brown skin, her white hair tight in tight braids, with kindly hazel eyes dressed in a simple white robe. She smiles as she draws near and extends her arms in greeting. Welcome to Dragon's Rest, she says. As the, the kobolds kind of make way a little bit once they see, uh, get eye shot of her coming in. And, uh, mm. and she says, yeah, welcome to Dragon's Rest. May Bahamut, uh, Bahamut's guidance lead you to whatever you seek. Thank you very much. Uh, may I ask your name? I am Runaria. Runaria? Runaria. What a lovely name. As the leader of this group, when did As that happen? As the leader <laughs> of this group, no, Barry don't on. like that. I don't remember nominating 20. No As short the King. leader of this group, I would like to introduce myself as Bengtis Prodkin. I assure you that we come in peace, each with our own goals, but in general, with goodness in our hearts. I would like to uh, smack him, like, can I smack him without doing damage? Yeah. Okay, a gentle, can I, do I roll for it? Yeah, you gotta hit his AC. I'm rolling oh, to AC. slap him upside okay. the head because AC? we're all, uh, yeah. it's a democracy. And we didn't vote. <laughs> Eight. Um, you kind of like go to, to, to hit bank on the back of the head, but you kind of like miss and kind of like, kind of like push into him or whatever, but it kind of feels like you're like then pushing him up to the front like he is the leader. Uh, so it kind of goes uh, against exactly, it's like, oh yeah. I knew I could count mm, on you, Barry. I bolstered him. Yeah, Barry yeah. didn't like that. Uh, Renara uh, invites you, uh, come, uh, you look so weary, uh, you know, you can see that you're, <laughs> that you're bleeding, please. Come, we can, you can rest it. 
rest here at the at Dragon's Rest. I would like to rest for a long time. Bera needs to nap. That would be Is wonderful. Can what, you lead what, us back to the? Yes, uh, what, and, and she starts leading you back towards. Uh, we have these some rooms here that you can mm. take refuge oh, in for the moment. Individual rooms, if you'd like. Uh, we have. Uh, this is a very small uh, a cloister, if yeah. you will. We could be uh, roomies, I... Barry. Barry wants to sleep with Monocle. <laughs> well, Barry, do you remember how we yes. talked about outside I'm thoughts and inside <laughs> thoughts? Mon <laughs> Barry wants to know what Monocle thinks. I'm in. You notice that all the um, all of these like rooms that are like cut into the um, into the cliff face. Mm. Uh, there's no doors on them. They're just open mm -hmm. rooms. If you wish mm -hmm. to sleep here, uh, there are these two rooms uh, that you can make use of. If you'd like to have something to eat, we'll be uh, serving food uh, later in, in a few hours, I suppose. Mm. Um, generosity is very much yeah. appreciated and accepted. Right. What do we owe? Oh, that's a good question. There, there is no. You are you are all welcome here for making this journey. I say let's let's take a long rest. Um, I uh, don't need to sleep as an elf. Four hours. Is um, four hours. yes, I can finish a long rest in four hours. So we can um, finish a long rest in four hours. Right, right, my fellow elf. So we have. So how about we have? Um, I'll, I'll long rest with you. You long rest with her, and then, and then uh, oh, sorry, Barry is a gent, and uh, and then. Uh, the other one can keep guard after that. Yes. Um, it's so relatively it's early in the day. Uh, you guys set out at the at dawn to to come out here, so it hasn't been too long. If you want to rest, you can. Yeah. So uh, there are two different kinds of resting uh, things that you can do in this game. Uh, the first being a short rest, which takes roughly an hour or so. Mm -hmm. And during that time, um, any abilities that you have that return on a short rest, they are usable again. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, there's the long rest, which is a rough like eight hour rest, that in which case all of your hit, hit points automatically go back to full. There is no <gasps> having to roll for anything. You get um, on any spells, uh, if, you have sp if you use spell slots, you get okay. those open back up for you. And generally, uh, if you're a spellcaster, uh, like a cleric, uh, like Barry, yes. uh, you'll be able to reset which spells that you want to start with at the beginning oh. of the day if you pray for your spells. So, oh, yeah. um, seeing as I don't need spells, um, I can just take a short rest for an hour and then guard everyone else. I think you can trust me. I'll work on my backflips. So I'll, I would like to take a short rest for an hour and if I need mm -hmm. more health after that, I'll rest for one more, but then... Uh, and, during, and during this time, um, when you take a long rest, it doesn't necessarily have to be sleeping. It can be just taking it easy, walking around. Oh, well then we're definitely doing that. But it would have to be for like eight hours. Let's all decide that for eight hours we're going to eat and drink Rest, and relax and, and nap, chill. Whatever it is. A little bit of self-care. Barry is going to find a, a statue of Bahamut mm -hmm. and do a little prayer. Mm, great. Um, to recharge. Renera uh, directs you up the stairs and says there, uh, uh, the statue of Bahamut is, is at the top, at the peak of the cloister. Um, and you can see here in the center area, which let me just put right I don't know, here, there is a statue of a dragon. A long path leads from the rocky shore up the side of the cliff with occasional stairs to ease the ascent. Here uh, and there along the lower part of the path, there are well-tended garden plots with flowers and herbs and vegetables. Mm. Uh, about 30 feet above the bay, the path widens into a long plaza. Halfway along that plaza, a stone statue of a dragon gazes serenely down the path. Six open doorways are cut into the cliffside. So this would be the statue here. So can yes. Barry do that? Yeah. Okay, then I'm gonna go uh, have so a feast. Go, yeah, you can go. Up, you can go up to the kitchen. You can get some food. You can talk with some of the kobolds that are around. When I talk, can I speak with them about information potentially? Yeah. And that's yeah, not yeah, too yeah. intense. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to the mess hall area, have some food. You know, enjoy that with them. Uh, does anyone else want to go anywhere else? I meditate. You to meditate? Mm. Where are you meditating? In a room. I'm also gonna go into my room take the free space while while Barry's praying. Okay, Barry, you have gone up to the Temple of Bahamut. That highest point of the cloister is crowned by an open air temple that overhangs the cliff, supported by arched stone struts anchored into the cliff face. The north wall of the temple is carved directly into the rock, and oh, while the rest of the, yeah, the rest of the uh, temple is open to the sea air. Heavy pillars mark the three open sides. 
uh, supporting a wooden roof. In the center of the temple stands a stone statue with a kind-looking old man with canaries perched on his hands, shoulders, and head. A feeling of serenity suffuses the place. Barry, are you going to do anything with the statue, or uh, what, are, what are we thinking? We haven't ended the long rest yet. Yeah, I, I feel like everyone's everyone's spending their time resting. Okay. Uh, it, you don't necessarily have to spend the entire time there, but eventually everyone uh, becomes fully rested okay. and you're able to uh, regain all of your hit points. So if you've taken damage, you are now back at your full hit points. Nine. It is now uh, closer to the evening Okay. now, uh, but the wind has kind of settled down and the, cal the, sea, the seas are calm. Okay, uh, if you all want to meet back up, you can. I exit my room. All right. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay in the mess so hall. I feel like that's a good place for us to meet up, right? Or yeah, what, sure. What do y'all think? Maybe I could talk to Elder Runara? Yes. Runara? I come to get you. Uh, Runara. Runara. You know what? Yeah, Runara. I'll, I'll join you. I also would like to go and talk to El... Barry would like to talk to Elder Runara. Have they found her already? Um, or do we need to She's look? not currently in the, in the, yeah. uh, the mess hall yeah, or anything, yeah, yeah. Okay. but um, there's a couple kobolds there, one sitting there. Creature, come forth. <laughs> <laughs> Where is Elder Runara? Kobold that's sitting closest to you kind of like looks over and um, he's like sitting there with a little knife in his hand because he was, but it's not the knife he's eating with, it's a separate one, but he like never lets go of it. You've noticed that as long as you've been in there, he's always had it in his hand the whole time. I haven't seen her anywhere, it's probably in the library maybe. And which way is the library? Uh, and he kind of like points off into this direction. Uh, so we can conclude that since the statue is all the way over there and we are in the feast hall, that this might be the library. Good. Excellent. <laughs> I, I would like to I immediately start w yes. walking in that direction. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. Let's go. I wave off the creature. And then we think a kobold has come with us, but it's just banked us. He's the same size, and we forgot. Roast him. I, what <laughs> did I do? Short um, kings. Is, oh yeah, he'll, he actually comes along with you guys. Uh, okay, the kobold does? Open? Yes, that is the only place that has a door, and that door is openable. So we open and we walk in. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, out of all the doorways cut into the, cut into the cliff face, this is the only one with an actual door. Wait, girl, are you still uh, praying? I feel like there's something I could find in the temple. So I, I was gonna try it. Are there any, can I ask you? <laughs> yeah. Are, is there, is there anybody in the temple with me? Um, one of the other kobolds is oh. there, uh, kind of like upkeeping the place, kind of like sweeping mm. and, and. Oh, they nice. always, they you, always know shit. Yeah, while you were there as well, like Renara was there for a bit while you were praying. Okay. And she was also there praying and tending to the grounds as well, but you were deep in, into, your, uh, into your prayers, so didn't want to disturb you. Can I ask the kobold something? Sure. Um, Cobalt, Barry needs to talk to you real quick. Uh, do you trust the elder? Ooh. She puts out her hand. Hi, I'm Lily. Hi, Lily. Here's my hand as well. I'm Barry. Wow. Yeah, what, what was your question again? Barry wants to know if me and my friends should trust Elder Renara. Oh, yeah, she's great. <laughs> <laughs> she's been here for longer than I have. I think she's been here forever. Forever? I mean, I don't know, I'm only eight. How Trust long has Renara been here? Uh, probably forever. I feel like I could get more out of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do have intimidation. Oh, you're, uh, okay. Um, Barry's gonna ask another question. <laughs> do I have to roll? Can I just no, ask? Okay. Can you ask a question? Okay. Barry picks up Lily and yeah, says, pick me up. Okay, Lily, you like this. Okay. Uppies. 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 Okay, Barry picks up Lily. Lily, tell me something specific. Tell me a secret. Tell me a secret of this place, Lily. Tell me something. I know you're only eight. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's going to be an intimidation roll. Okay. This is the one, right? Yeah, that's okay. not necessarily one. Do it. It's a nat one. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> the kobold gets split clean in half. <laughs> no, 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 no. Barry puts Lily down and joins the others. Lily kind of is like, <laughs> kind, of, kind, of, kind, of, kind of, yeah, kind of dizzy from the being shook around. It's like, okay, that was good, that was fun. I'm gonna go now though, bye. And like kind of like saunters and kind of almost falls up and doesn't, goes so down the path. so cute, how could you intimidate them? <laughs> well, while we're in the library then. Yes, uh, as um, you guys can into the library. Is, Good of uh, you to join us, Barry. I'm sure they have picture books somewhere here. 
<laughs> Barry doesn't like Sylph's tone. <laughs> <laughs> and while we're on the topic, I feel like this side is particularly rude. The elves, it's the elves, isn't it? Barry doesn't like bank disease. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I do um, I do a backflip into the corner. Uh, I'm like, I'm gonna be like, I'll be right back. I'm going to go cry about something else. <laughs> and I try to backflip into corner uh, 17. Uh, so that's a 22 to backflip into the corner and just sort of sulk. So I'm just uh, like sulking over here. I'm just like, oh, <clears throat> interesting, this book. Lining all the way around is. <laughs> Not realizing book, this, I like, backflip into a pile book of books. <laughs> Bookshelves uh, here. And then there is a table to read at. So you backflipped over the table. Wow. Wow. That sounds like a pretty sick thing to do. So maybe now that we don't have our self-proclaimed leader, I can still hear you. I'm ten feet away. Perhaps the three of us call out for Elder Runara. Uh, when you say Runara, uh, she walks out from behind the bookcases. She's Yay. been. She has a book, a few books in hand, and was kind of tidying up the place. Milady, how are you today? I am. I am fine. I see you all have rested up. If you, if you put, pick up the books, if you'd like, if you're interested in reading anything here, the knowledge is open for everyone. Is there anything uh, in particular that you would recommend for a group of travelers like ourselves? Oh, there, there are several. Uh, some are um, histories of the, the ages of dragons of the Bahamut, and there are others that uh, that travelers have come and, and left behind as, uh, yeah, as tribute uh, to Bahamut. Mm. To share it in knowledge. I just, uh, I, I, you hear me sniffle from the corner and go like, <laughs> where, <laughs> where might one find one of the ones that a traveler left, specifically a recent one? Uh, they're, they're mixed amongst the books. I oh, good. Speaking what? of histories, I would love to know the history of Bahamut and this island in particular. Ah, that I can tell you. According to legend, um, the two families of dragon came into, into being at the very you know, first days of the world's creation, as you know. And Bahamut and Tiamat fought against each other, the two, um, the chromatic dragons and the metallic dragons. And they've always shared a, an animosity with each other. The origin of this place is rooted, rooted, rooted in that animosity. Mm. There were lots of dragons that fought over this place. It's a place of power, and you will find that um, many dragons have been laid to rest here from those battles. We make it a point here at uh, Dragon's Rest. We are here to be nonviolent. We are here to cooperate with each other, and I truly believe that all the different dragons can, can coalesce and be together if uh, we can get past that animosity. Well said, Renara. Barry wants to see the, the dragon graveyard. That is um, actually throughout the island, I'm sure you'll find different places. In fact, down at the, uh, at the entrance is uh, a marking of a, of a particular bronze dragon that we've uh, made, a, made a statue for Astalagan, who died on these cliffs, very yes. cliffs, centuries ago. His, his sacrifice uh, is part of the reason why this place was founded. The library is beautiful, uh, so too is the temple. Are there any other things on the island? Oh, there are many places Structures. and things on this island. She speaks of, uh, um, of an observatory to the south, uh, which uh, is very difficult to get, th get to. She talks about some caves to the south as well, to the southwest. Um, mm. And then Blep pop pipes up and, say, and talks about the shipwrecks. He's, uh, he says, oh yeah, I know the shipwrecks up to the north. Would, uh, would those caves uh, in the southern hemisphere um, potentially hold an old sage that provides supernatural insight, per se? Um, I'm not aware of any sages that live in the caves. It's, it's quite dangerous and down by the sea. Liar. Oh. oh. Liar. Wow. I know you know more, Runara. <gasps> You're a very inquisitive young child. I'm an elf. I'm aware. The shipwrecks have been an issue as of late. I believe you might have encountered some of the uh, some of the Zombies. creatures. Yes, uh, uh, they've been you noticed our zombie wounds, eh? <laughs> yes, they're uh, astute. A few of us have had to deal with them uh, most recently. They've become a, a nuisance, and they've been regularly uh, piling up, as you so say, sorry. upon the beaches. Do you know what the source of this magic? Is? Well, there have always been shipwrecks along the sh northern shores, but, but as of late, yeah, it has been 
happening most, more often. Mm. Um, there was one not but a, couple, a few weeks ago. There are times where um, music can be heard upon the winds, like singing and whatnot, but um, we fear that there could be something there. Perhaps there's something aboard one of the ships that is messing up everything in the currents, and that we got everybody all magic and weird. The rocks up, up north are pretty treacherous. Yeah, there's weird rocks. Um, while, while you guys are having this conversation, because I'm back in the corner, um, because I need to feel better about myself, um, can I s just steal a book? Yeah, you want to pocket a book? Yeah, I want to pocket a book. Yeah, roll the roll so Slide uh, of hand, hand or stealth? Or just any old book that you see? Yeah, just any, I just want a book. Just want a book, take a book. Some books. Oh, I'm just gonna be an 11. You place a book, into your into your pack, nice. or and you you have it. What's uh, what's the book called? Um, the thoughts. Tom and Sawyer. <laughs> <laughs> the the thoughts and regalements of Jonathan B. Tumberman. I yeah. stopped crying because I did my self soothing action. All right. Great. I would love to explore more of the island um, if you'd be so willing to have us. Barry would yes. like to go to another cloister. <laughs> oh, this is the only cloister. Okay. Here on, <laughs> on the island, aside from the cloister of ships up to the north that have been broken. Oh, I think perhaps we should go to the cloister of Can ships. Can we go to that cloister? <laughs> you may. Uh, there's a, a there's a rowboat that you might have seen on the way up that you are free to use. Will you come with us? Uh, my frail bones. I don't know if I could make it out there. Barry there's wants a, a, a more assistance. Can uh, Renara send maybe a cobalt, your right hand cobalt, to help us get to this little rowboat? Flip's like, oh yeah, I gotta go, I could go. Yeah, give us I'll a cute her. one, give us a good give one. Us a good Why one. are we going in the rowboat? To go to see the ships, the you know, in the water. They're in the water. As Banktus uh, passes me, I reach into his bag and pull out the book and put it back. Oh, oh, oh. you gotta roll for that though. 14. Plus. What, what's your uh, uh, sleight of hand? Plus two. Yeah, you're able to just snag the book right back out of his bag. And I put it on the shelf. Because Banktus is a klepto. Tried to rob the zombies we brutally rob murdered. Zombies. You have a problem with Rob Zombie? <laughs> rob Zombie. Director and musician. <laughs> to the ships! <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so Blep has joined. Okay. Mm. Blep has uh, joined the party. Blep Welcome. is on the boat. Uh, after about an hour and a half of rowing as it does take a bit to get there. So Blep points out one of the larger ships that you can see, and that's the one you guys are going to. Mm. Uh, waves lap against this derelict ship, lodged against a ridge of rocks and enormous dragon bones. A faint odor of rot wafts up on the sea air, along with the sound of screeching seagulls and the roar of surf. A tangled mess, <laughs> a tangled mess of tattered sails and riggings hangs off the starboard side of the main deck. Uh, offering one possible way to climb aboard. At the stern, you can make out a gaping hole in the hull uh, underneath the water line. Oh, over here is where all the uh, the rigging and... Uh, oh, yeah, we can use a little boat. Let's do a little boat. A little Everybody's boat. on the boat. A little baby boat. Who's rowing? Who's uh, obviously, Blip. Blip. He's the smallest <laughs> out of all of y'all. Oh, no, is that have, right? No, we have Banktus. Oh, is that right? Smallest out of all of us, Blep is rowing. That's great. That sounds good to me. Either he can that. only do one oar at a time. So you guys actually spent the first half an hour going in circles. Oh. And then, yeah. Freaking Blep. So um, there are two different means of getting onto the boat, from what you can tell. Uh, you can investigate, you can sail around or, or, boat, or row around the, the boat if you want to get better advantages. Yep. Barry wants to climb up those little tattered little things coming off the boat because he wants to protect his group mm -hmm. um, because I have such high armor yeah. um, and I'm strong and athletic. So the, you guys all, everyone that's decided, he's like, ah, take me to the, to the ship. Please. Uh, and so you sail up or uh, row up closer to the ship and he, uh, Blep is able to take a little bit of the rope and kind of like tie it off to um, like a kind of broken plank or whatever it is so the, the, the boat isn't gonna float away. Go ahead and make a an athletics roll. Okay, yes. oh, we're cooking, all right, here we go. 13 plus four, 17. Woo. Great, you, uh, you climb up the rigging and, uh, and none of it uh, like breaks or anything as you go up um, and you, uh, you find yourself at the top, top deck, it's about, uh, let's say ten feet Ooh. up to the to the deck or to that top deck. Uh, is anyone else looking I, to join? Yeah, I jump up, grab the top, highest rope that I can get, and then I launch my legs over and land on the boat. Okay, this is uh, acrobatic. That'll be an acrobatics then. Okay. Oh no. 
three plus two. Uh, <laughs> and I pulled my legs to pull the boat closer. And I was like, here you go, you guys. Decided to get you a little closer to the boat so you can get up. Um, they don't have anything to hold on to. Since they are, <laughs> since oh, they are so tall, um, I would like to use uh, my acrobatics uh, check to like sort of run up Sylph's back as they're in that position and like <laughs> run up to the top of the boat. Okay. Like, Bankdis needs no help. Makes sense. It's up to five with another five. <laughs> so it's a ten. Okay. Uh, are you assisting in this action? Are you helping? Mm, or are you... I'm letting it be. You bounce off of the self's back and kind of don't get all the way to the top, but you're in on the rigging. Okay, cool. Can I continue to try yeah, to climb you can up? Climb, you can climb up. With acrobatics? Uh, with athletics. Oh, God. I've got a minus one there. Eight. You slowly make your way to the top. It's only half of the way, but it takes you about the entire time. You try not to be too impressed <laughs> <laughs> at the explosive practice. Pumpkin. I am going to uh, ricochet uh -huh. uh, off of the bridge that is built uh, from Sylph's body. Sylph's body. <laughs> from Sylph's body. Yeah. I might um, have to make you roll a constitution check if somebody fair. else tries to yeah. climb on this. Is there some advantage to being small? It's mm -hmm. fine. Um, so uh, acrobatically, mm -hmm. I, vault I vault off. Uh, okay. To avoid the ship. Roll a roll a um, a constant. Uh, let's do a strength check, actually. What did I just so roll? you're gonna roll a d20. Five. Okay. So Jeez. when you when you go to vault off of self, um, he you self gives out and kind of falls into the water uh, along you with him. Okay. I swim over and climb up what I can. Yeah. Um, if if anyone. Would like to assist. Uh, you can also check your items. Yeah. Yeah, I was about to. Yeah. Uh, Barry would like to throw down fifty feet of rope. <laughs> fifty feet. That's a ten. That's a ten foot drop. Just the whole. The <laughs> whole, whole rope. Uh, the whole here rope. you go. <laughs> Barry <laughs> wants to help everybody else get up, so uh, yeah. Barry takes his rope out, <laughs> throws it down uh, for whoever's left on the boat, including Blip. Mm -hmm. uh, Blip can. Also <laughs> so okay. So uh, you've all, you all, uh, with uh, with Barry's help and and everything, everyone gets to the gets on top of the deck. The moldering wood of the deck is slick with algae and seawater. This is why it was hard for you guys to get up there. Mm, that's the reason. Uh, amid the tangle of rigging, splintered railings, and stray seaweed, you spot boots, bones, and a bit of gourd that seem considerably more recent than the wreck of the ship. Stairs lead to the upper decks in the fore and aft, um, and doors lead to cabins under those decks. Mm. The main mast remains intact and is mostly upright, topped with a crow's nest overflowing with debris. Mm. A staircase near the mast and a large hatch on the port side uh, both lead down into the hole. I say we split up and investigate this ship. I'll start with those boots that are free. And I grab the boots. They are just rotted leather boots kind of falling apart. I you have, have them, them and you put them in your pocket? Great. Great. Um, I look around for any signs of blood. There is some, some like bits of, like I said, bits of gore and stuff, mm. um, just kind of like splattered about in different mm. places. But it's not like, it's like with the bones of the body that you, that you see the parts I, of the I look at the bones to see if it's like clean cuts or if it's like bite marks or if there's anything. Great, uh, roll perception. Sure. Mm. Smart, smart. A nat one, Christ, guys. Ch uh, you don't. Yeah, they're bones. <laughs> like you immediately go blind. <laughs> you're like, oh yeah, that's what that's what normal bones look like. Okay. Mm. They look like normal bones, everyone. <laughs> um, I'm gonna ask Barry yes. if they would like to team up with me for a moment as we search the ship and make yes. sure that there are no other living creatures. Yes. Do you want to go up to the crow's nest? I would love nothing more. Mm -hmm. um, let's go, let's start with the crow's nest, then we can move downward. Yes. There's a rope ladder that uh, runs up the mast to the crow's nest, um, and it seems pretty secure uh, despite the condition of the wreck. And you think that it's climbable. It's about 50 foot climb up. Oh. Do I need to roll to climb? We've got 50 feet. Uh, with with the, the rope ladder, you, can, you can just do it. I'm climbing. You start climbing up the ladder. 
Uh, does anyone else join you? Monica. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm in. I'm You're with in. you. I think what Chance is trying to say. <laughs> I tell Blip to watch the boat. <laughs> Blip, uh, watch the rowboat. Uh, getting up to the top of the crow's nest, you see that there's just a bunch of um, bones and tufts of hair and shiny baubles and things like that. Yeah, wood shavings and dry grass and shredded canvas from the ship stales that you can um, see kind of just basketed uh, around the, um, the crow's nest. Bangsters, there's baubles and stuff for you to steal! <laughs> 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 that was not Barry. Sorry. <laughs> Can you throw them down, please? I'll catch each and every one of them. It'll be awesome. Do you choose to throw down some baubles? Yeah, I got, got you. Here's some baubles. Uh, <laughs> so go ahead and search. Uh, roll a... Roll a um, I am, if anything... Yeah, roll a perception check. So roll a... Uh, or investigation, actually. Boy, yes. Investigation. I you sure you don't want me to roll perception? Are you sure, Tim? Okay. You're investigating. I am you're, investigating. You're I'm, I'm investigating the baubles. Mommy knows best. You're looking around. I think I was investigating. Oh. Four. A nat Plus. four. Nat four. It's a zero. <laughs> There's nothing else to you add. Like that one? You see I bits of glass. But uh, if I had perceived it, it would have been seven. You see. <laughs> uh, you do search around. You do find um, a small gold bracelet. Ooh, tea. Barry gives the bracelet to Monica. <gasps> My uncle says, says yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Barry says, shh, don't tell anybody. To, shh, don't tell Banks Tess about it. <laughs> Do I need a roll? <laughs> Is the, there a romance? Do a performance check. You sure you don't want it to be charisma? <laughs> I mean, a performance, performance will be boosted uses. by your charisma. So oh, so do I add the two? Monica, it's be, it's me, your boy Barry. <laughs> Here's this gold bracelet. <gasps> a nine. How do you feel about that? Monica? I feel oh. like I want to search this ship for a private room. <gasps> Jesus. Uh, On a nine? On a nine? All right. These, I mean, you could be into it. While they're doing that, Sylph, would you like to explore <laughs> another area of this with me? Team up and investigate a little bit more. I would like that. Excellent. Uh, can Sylph and I move down to the next level down of the main deck? So you guys are actually on this same deck, but this is these are the rooms that are on the current level that you're in. These are the ones that if you have to go up to. So there are, these are all the different places you can go. We're inside the let, room. But this, let's this is search the, the rooms on sure. the main deck. Do you want to split up and go this way? Here we Absolutely, go. I'll go to I'll, the right. I'll go to the left. That's worse. <laughs> well, disgusting. Doors here. <laughs> oh, we're Door switching here. to the, oh. You could be on top. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, Blip is kind of just hanging out, looking around. He's got his knife out. Neck is craned 50 knife feet play. in the sky. Like, cool. Uh, so. Uh, as you go to that door, you notice that it's a, um, so there's a heavy wooden door uh, that is like kind of half rotten, though it doesn't open easily. Uh, you, it looks like you'd have to actually forcefully open it. I forcefully open it. Uh, instead, of, instead of investigating separately, what if I helped you? Because I have thieves tools. Oh, sure, come. What, what, so what if I, with our combined strength and combined exper uh, expertise, somehow we could work together? Thieves tools and you push. If you feel like, uh, the, the thieves, it's not a matter of it being locked, it's just a matter of it needing some forceful some entry. Um, but you can. Can we ram can, it together? Yeah, you can All ram right. it together. Let's go, because I don't think, as a wizard, what's your strength? Not good. Yep, same, <laughs> so let's ram it together. Yep. So uh, who's taking the lead on the ramming? I'll take the lead. Okay. As, a, as a democratically elected leader, you should definitely take the lead. We've been switching off over here. So then, um, so around. you're going to be performing the help action. <laughs> yes. Uh, in which, in which case, you'll be able to roll two d20s. Thank you. And you'll be able to take the better of the two. Well, one's a seven, and one's a nine. Can, I'm sorry, just because it's me helping, can we redo that and you use my d20 over sure. here? Keep the nine. Keep the nine. And roll that d20. This is my help. It'll be a fifteen. 16. There we go. <laughs> Great. The door crashes open to reveal two zombies! <gasps> no! no! This is what I didn't want to be here. Oh, Thank goodness snap. we look together, though. Uh, just inside, you can see that there is a hole in the floor. Oh. And this cabin looks rather luxurious, or at least it used to be luxurious. Mm. 
As a free action, can I quickly, before we start combat, take a look around the room from, in perception-wise, uh, see if there's anything of value here, of anything that looks particularly important? Um, if you do that, oh, so initiative is going to start right mm, okay. now. So we can roll initiative. Um, you have surprised these two creatures. They were not knowing that you were there. So okay. if you want to use the action that you would have uh, during this, like the first, the first round that where they are surprised, you can you can do a search. Um, it. But it's up to you on what you'd like to do. Um, so let's roll initiative for at least for you two. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna roll for Blip if he ends up trying to hang out. Um, that is going to be a 19 for me. Oh shoot. 16 plus three. 18. For me. Yeah. Oh, oh plus two. <gasps> You got a 20! That's a dirty 20? Dirty dirty 20! Now you got the language! And do we need to stop knocking boots and join? (laughs) I got Uh, the boots. I stole them. You can hear from down below that uh, there was a crashing, like the door was, like something was smashed open. And uh, I don't know if you guys want to say anything, but it's up to you. I do. And it's just zombies! Okay, and then, (laughs) so... That might be. Mood killer. <laughs> there is done. <laughs> Can we also have them have the realization of if they if they could hear our door open, then we could probably hear everything else by that by that problem. And what about it? I, and I, just, I don't think that happened. Be Barry would like to go down to the main deck. Okay. <laughs> so uh, let's just roll both of your initiatives as well right now as well. Okay. Uh, right. And then I will and superhero add them in. landing in front of us. And 50 then feet it'll down. probably <laughs> you you can as an action take a dash action. Ooh, okay. And which allows you to move your movement twice. So you guys can do that to climb down. In probably, it'll probably take a turn to climb down and then yeah. get close. Barry! <laughs> what inappropriate Barry. action. Oh, shoot. Uh, you rolled a two. Oh, oh Jesus. <laughs> Plus three. And I rolled an 11. Okay. My mistake. So 11, that's with any kind of bonuses? 12 Super minus one. one. Okay, so top of the initiative order is Sylph. <laughs> and I cast Ray of Frost. Smart. <gasps> and they're surprised, right? So we get they a are, Yeah, <clears throat> they are surprised. So um, while they are surprised, I believe you just get uh, advantage, so you get to roll two d twenty. Oh, nice. Two that's D20. that's a good idea. Yeah, do a different d twenty. That one's cursed. Eighteen. Uh, your ice bolt flies out of your hand and hits it. Uh, which one were you attacking? Uh, the blue one. The blue one. That's, per- one. that's appropriate. One d eight. The Elsa. Two. Two damage. And is uh, is now stunned or uh, s- slowed. Slowed. Uh, next on the list is Banktis. Banktis, perhaps you've heard of me. Um, I am going to, um, since no one else is near these uh, Zambies right now, so so how does this work when they're surprised? Do I get like a free action of like perception of the room before I do like a movement and an attack? Is that a possibility? Uh, you can, you can, yeah, uh, I mean, you don't need to make an action to just eyeball the room, but to like, to actually search through everything. Oh, I'm not gonna search through everything. I just wanna eyeball the room to see like what sticks out here. If I see anything written in Thieves' Cant, if there is... Oh, um, anything like that. Let me take a look really quick. I just wanna like look around real quick and just like see, assess the situation. Uh, A briefcase, or a bookcase, sorry. Uh, Half collapse, hold waterlogged and disintegrating books and scrolls. A polished wood desk leans awkwardly on three legs in the corner. Uh, there's an ornate compass set in its center, uh, which still looks to be from your eye in good condition. Mm. Um, the bed is covered in rotting, rotting bedding and sags in the middle, and there's a big old jagged hole in the floor beside the bed. So I thought my sneak attack was just for my dagger, because usually enemies have to be close. But sneak attack also works when we have advantage, and yes, because we are surprising them, we have advantage. Yep. So I'm going to take one step back two step back, line this up, and fire away at this thing with a sneak attack. The Great. one the chance has already attacked. I'm sorry, Sylph has already attacked. So I'm gonna say one liners that, that's really cool. Time to die for nice. you. Nice, nice. <laughs> um, that is a four plus, um, that would be to hit, uh, well, uh, yeah, plus five. So that would be a nine to hit. Nine to hit, it hits. It hits, okay, it amazing. Hits the, it hits the, the zombie. So we're gonna do 1d6 plus three piercing damage. That's six plus three, so that's mm-hmm. nine so far. And then, 
another five. So that is 14 to the zombie. The chance is already hit. Okay, 14. Sorry. Oh, yeah, and I'm going to continue, like, trailing off from my one line. Time to die for you today. <laughs> right now. Um, okay. Oh. So you successfully did that. Do you want to move anymore or anything like that? You good um, Yes, I am going to. Well, that would be a bonus action. Um, so I, I moved one, two, and I'm going to be uh, right back. From back there, you will. You can only shoot through the door and hit this guy with from that angle. You won't. You don't I would have, have to an move forward again and then shoot. Yeah, yeah. I'm you just trying to get move. myself out of the way here. Okay. Um, and I wish you the best of luck. No, it's okay. I'll be fine. Okay. Barry, you're up. Barry's up. <laughs> okay. Barry wants to dash. <laughs> can Barry dash? Yeah, Barry can dash. Can Barry go down to the main deck? Barry can make it down to the main deck with ten feet to spare. So you can get, you come all the way down. Blep um, is just gonna, uh, he's, he's, he's standing there with his knife and he goes, ah, 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 what is it? And that's all he's doing. Oh, so. thank you, Blep. Damn it, Blep, you're eight. It's time to learn how to kill a man. <laughs> is Blep no longer on the main deck? Oh, no. Blep, is it? Blep's on the main deck. He's I just want him to be in harm's way. Okay, so the zombies are still surprised. They are okay. unable to act right now. Okay. Uh, and so we now move on to Monocle. All right, well, I gotta get down to where the action is happening and support my group. Oh. So I'm dashing. Great. <laughs> so you can get down to the bottom of the of the mast and you have you have a 35 foot movement. Correct. So you have an additional 20 feet of movement. I shall move. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 5, 10, mm -hmm. 15, yep. 20. Great. All right, we are back at the top of the initiative. Uh, Sylph is up next. Uh, the zombies are in the corner of the room. Oh yeah, they are. All over. Yeah, they're both in the the far corner of the room. Uh, they are uh, kind of like shaking off their surprisedness. Okay, I. And they're kind of turning towards you now. I cast thunder wave, oh, thunder which wave. is like a big clap, and then <laughs> boom force. Yes, boom, great clap. The sound of my heart. <laughs> That's good. The beat goes on. And I go. <laughs> with a 15. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Plus, plus five. Plus five. Oh, oh, wait, that's just, just a C for two. Wait, 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 wait. That doesn't necessarily how Thunder Wave works. You're right, you're right. That's a good point. That's a good point. I didn't so, think about it like that. So you would have, so number one, in order to use Thunder Wave, you'd have to move a little bit closer, probably in just barely. Absolutely, into the room. I did okay. that. The other thing is, you don't need to roll anything. Oh. They're rolling to resist. Uh, oh, they're wow. doing a Constitution saving throw. Oh, so it's like so, an automatic hit. Yeah, they're going to get hit if they if they make a save, then they only take half damage. If Ooh. they don't make that save, they take full damage. Great. But you're also really going to be like doing that. just damage to everything in everything that in swath the, the of uh, your Thunder Wave. Uh, great. So let me just roll these. Okay, so you 13. have a plus. Th you have sorry, 13. So they've got to beat 13. So let me see if they can. One did, but one did not. Let me see. So you can go ahead and roll your damage now. Seven. Amazing. You love to see it. Eight. Whoa! Whoa! Okay. So um, with that amount of damage, you uh, you clap your hands together in front of you and send out a thunderous wave of energy. Um, and given this, not only like it slams into the zombies. Oh. One is uh, kind of like able to kind of like not get pushed back or fall by it, but the other one gets pushed farther into the back and just the sheer amount of energy, given that that was, what, 15 damage, um, you are also doing damage to the floorboards, which, were already which are already rotted, so they are destroyed. I'm going to continue to break out the hole oh, and the rest of the thing, and the zombies have fallen down the wow. hole. There goes that compass that looks fancy. So now are they on the bottom deck? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows where they could be, but they've God definitely damn. fallen away from them. That might be the zombie incinerator machine directly beneath right. them. We don't know. Right. But you hear, with the falling thing, a clattering and, and smashing of other things underneath, um, you don't, you no longer hear the zombies groaning or moaning or anything. Um, and they like, fell 50 feet. They, they, fell, they fell pretty far. Is I don't know if it's 200 feet? foot mm -hmm. tall. And I, 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 uh, I turn around to the rest of my party and I go like this. <laughs> and I just, I, I, I start clapping. I just, and so we all look down to see you clapping. And Barry says, like Sylph did what needed to be done. Nice. <laughs> okay. 
Great. And so they all lived please. happily. No. Oh. <laughs> mm. So we're out of com or out of uh, initiative combat. We're not in combat anymore. Okay. Nice. Um, and you are free to uh, move about the cabin. Move about the cabin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mary. Uh, uh, upper nest in ten. <laughs> Mon Monaco. What about the bottom nest? <laughs> Uh, Barry and I might be heading downward to explore the area, just in to case anyone's curious. To perceive it a little bit. <laughs> the monocle stays on. Yes, and so does my pouch. I'll bring the mace. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm into mace play. Okay. How vile. <laughs> if you want to check out the starter kit for yourself, click the link in the description below.